Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today we'll be doing a snow globe tumbler tutorial using the newer kind of glass snow globe ones. Now listen, the last snow globe tumbler tutorial I did did not turn out so great. I mean, I liked it, but we had some issues. So I'm very excited to try it with these new glass ones. I think they're gonna seal really well and be really easy and fun to work with. And I've paired these with a really beautiful pink kind of cutesy Halloween design. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm going to have all the products that you see in this tutorial listed and linked down below in the description box. You might even find some discount codes for you there as well. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, so today we're using a 20 ounce glass snow globe tumbler from Craft Haven. It comes with that hole already at the bottom. And first I wanna determine how much fluid I'm going to need to fill this up. So I've got just some regular water in my squirt bottle here. I got this squirt bottle from Walmart in the kitchen section. And I'm gonna fill this up all the way to the hole just so I have a tiny little air bubble left. And then I'm gonna pour all the water out into this graduated measuring cup that I have. I have these just for like measuring epoxy. You could use, you know, whatever works for you. We just need to determine the exact amount of water needed. It's a little bit hard to pour the water out of this. I don't know why there was some sort of like air pressure or suction thing going on. So I sort of had to shake it. Uh, but I determined that this tumbler takes just over a half a cup of fluid. Next, I let some of that water in there dry for a little bit and I've got some painter's tape and then I've got some one inch painter's tape that I'm going to place on the sticky side of this wider tape here. I'm gonna use this as a barrier around the bottom of my tumbler here for when I'm pouring in the glitter so it makes less mess. And the glitter we're using today is Dress Up from Maestra Creations. I'll have a link and a discount code for this down below in the description box. We're gonna pour that right into the little hole down there. You might wanna tap the sides to help it go in quicker. I've also seen people use like back massagers and stuff <laughs> to do this. I don't know, I'm just, I'm tapping it. The hole on these is a little bigger than the hole that I created on the acrylic tumblers that I did a while back. So this process went by fairly quickly. I wanna fill up enough glitter in here so that it's about, it comes up about three inches up the side of the tumbler. Once I got enough glitter in there, I'm just going to use a little brush. I got this one from my friend Myra, it's so cute. I'm gonna just brush it into that hole there, all that excess, and then we'll remove our tape and now we're ready to start mixing our fluid for the inside. Using the same graduated mixing cup that I used earlier, I'm going to add in some distilled water. Remember, we're doing a half and half mixture. So one part distilled water to one part glycerin. I got this glycerin off Amazon. I'm wearing gloves just because I hate the feeling of this stuff on my hands. <laughs> but after I add in the glycerin, we're just gonna mix it up until it's totally clear. And then we'll pour our mixture into our squirt bottle very carefully. Then we'll just pour that liquid mixture into the hole of our glass tumbler here. After I fill it about halfway or so, I like to just shake it a bit to try and get the liquid to fully saturate all that glitter in there. We wanna get the liquid all the way through all the little nooks and crannies of all the glitter so we have an accurate fill so that we don't have air bubbles later. So what I'll do is I'll let this sit for a little while, I'll shake it up, and then I even let it off gas for a couple hours just to make sure all the additional air bubbles are out in case I need to add any additional liquid because I should only have about like a one inch little air bubble of room after I've added all the liquid, <laughs> that makes sense. So I do want a tiny little air bubble, uh, but not too much. Once all that liquid has settled and I know that I've filled it up as far as I possibly can while still leaving a tiny little air bubble, we're gonna clean up all of our mess here with some acetone and a paper towel. Because this is glass, the acetone's not going to fog it or affect it. 
Uh, then I'm going to take some sandpaper. This is just a 220 grit and I'm going to sand really well around the little hole there and I'm going to sand really well all around the hole over the whole bottom surface of the tumbler. After I'm done with that little gentle sanding, I'll wipe everything clean again with some acetone and a paper towel. We really just want to make sure that we've gotten all of the excess liquid and debris off of this bottom here, uh, as well as create a nice primed surface for good adhesion with our tape and our resin that we're going to be adding to seal this. Once that's all cleaned up, I'm going to take some Gorilla Tape. This is the clear heavy duty tape. I got this in the hardware section at Walmart. I couldn't find clear flex seal tape, which I would have liked better, but they only had flex seal tape in black. But this stuff says it's waterproof, so I'm, I'm trying it out. It seems pretty legit. So I'm just gonna snip off a small section here. Again, still have my gloves on, and I'm gonna attach it to a piece of old like vinyl adhesive backing, you know, like sticker paper, uh, just so that I can have something to brace it against Why I punch this hole with my one inch hole punch. So I'm making my own little sticker there. I've seen people seal this in a variety of ways. I'm just kind of using what I have around so I don't have to go out and buy something and it seems like this will work pretty well. So I'm gonna put that right over the hole but still kind of recessed in enough from the sides that I'll be able to seal all around that circle before going up the corner of the bottom if that makes sense. So I'm also going to really press down that tape with like the edge of a butter spreader or something that's like not sharp. I don't want to cut it, but I do want something nice and hard to really press it firmly against that glass. So you can see here what that looks like, nice and pretty and flat. I also want to do a quick shake test, really test that tape to see if it has any leaks and it's pretty good. I even set it down you know, face up and no leaks. So I'm ready to start sealing with my resin. I'm using UV resin from Resin Rockers. This is hands down my favorite UV resin. I'm just gonna pour just enough to go over that little seal circle that we just made with our tape. And then I'll seal that for 60 seconds with my light. After that's sealed, I'll go in again and seal the remainder of the bottom of our tumbler with the UV resin. Again, letting that cure under the light for this time about two to three minutes. Once that's fully dried, I did do another shake test and I set it down, you know, right side up for a few minutes just to test to make sure I didn't have any leaks. And once I was confident that this was nice and sealed, I'm gonna start prepping to do my vinyl work. I decided that I wanted to seal my vinyl with epoxy. So I had to find some cut pieces for my arms that would fit in there. These styrofoam pieces are from the Bowen and they were perfect and they weren't too hard or too thick to where I was afraid that I might break the inside. I'm gonna prep the outer parts of my tumbler with just some 220 grit sandpaper just to rough this up enough so that my epoxy has something really good to adhere to. You don't have to sand too much, just like a nice light dusting. I should also be wearing gloves when I'm sanding glass, but I forgot. Um, after I get this all sanded up, all surfaces are nice and roughed up. I'm gonna clean it off with some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. Now I'm ready to move on to my vinyl work. If you were using all permanent vinyl, like just all Oracle 651 or something, you don't have to sand and epoxy like I'm doing, but I'm gonna be using some vinyls that are not permanent and I want this to last for a long time. So I am gonna be sealing this with a regular two-part epoxy. For my vinyl, I'm gonna be doing this Spooky Babe decal that I got off Etsy. You guys have seen me use this in a tutorial before for my last Halloween design that I did, but I just loved it so much. I thought it was so cute. I had to use it again. Uh, this time, I'm just doing like the basic outline. I took off like the stars and the bat that come with it because I just wanted something simple. Then I'm gonna be adding in some little ghosts. These are so cute. I sized these at about one and a half inches tall. These are from Cricut Design Space. They're in their images that you could purchase or they're free if you pay for the monthly access. Um, and 
I cut these with just regular white vinyl. I also have some pink holographic vinyl and some really pale pink vinyl from Sicer. And I'm just going to use my one inch hole punch to cut a bunch of one inch holes. Of course, you could do this on your Cricut if you wanted to, but I wanted to use my hole punch for this because I thought it was much easier. And you're gonna see why later on in the video. I also cut a bunch of one inch five point stars with a silver holographic vinyl. And I'm gonna do some black polka dots as well. We've got all those vinyl pieces cut and weeded. I'm going to apply my ghosts kind of in a random pattern around my cup. Here is the inspiration photo for this tumbler. I had originally used this uh, for an inspiration type challenge that we did in my mentorship group. And I wish I could give the original artist credit for that image that I used as inspiration for this project, but it was just like a random photo that I found on Pinterest. Uh, so I apologize for that. I'm just adding these polka dots and stars around all kind of willy nilly. And I like the look of like those overlap polka dots. So I'm gonna use my circle punch to punch out where the overlap would be to kind of slice it and then place it right up against that other one. Not for all the polka dots, but just some of them to kind of emulate that random confetti pattern that was in the inspiration photo. And I just think it's so cute. Um, and so much easier than trying to mess around with my Cricut <laughs> for those. Now that I'm done with all that vinyl work, I'm ready to apply my epoxy resin. Again, if you don't want to epoxy this, you definitely don't have to, and you didn't have to sand it earlier if you aren't going to epoxy it. But that holographic vinyl and the silver holographic that I use definitely isn't permanent. It wouldn't last long against this glass, so I just wanna make sure that we seal it in. So I've got 30 milliliters of epoxy already mixed here and I'm just going to apply it like I normally would, going all the way up to that top rim. Don't worry if you get any inside the glass, you can just trim off and remove that later after it dries or you can wipe it out if you can reach in there uh, after you apply it, but just kind of be careful. I go all over the cup, even against that bottom. Yes, you can apply this right over the top of that UV resin that we did earlier. And I just think it makes for a very nice finished look. And I think maybe will help with the durability of that glass, having you know that kind of plastic coating to help protect it. I ended up doing two final coats on this before it was completely done. And that was it. So I absolutely love how this turned out. I, I'm obsessed with these glass snow globe cups. I think they're so cute and so much easier to work with. I love the final presentation. Let me know what you guys thought about this video in the comments. And if you like my video, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every Saturday and I'm thinking I might start uploading videos again on Wednesday as well. Now that I'm feeling better from my vertigo incident back in February, I'm feeling like I have much more energy uh, and I love doing the two videos a week for you guys. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon. Thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.